Hey guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to be doing a first impression on the brand new L'Oreal True Match Lumi Cushion Foundation. So what that basically means is I'm going to be trying out this foundation for the first time live on camera with you guys. And then throughout the day, I'm going to update you about all my thoughts on the foundation, how I think it's performing, my cons, my pros. And then at the end of the day, I will come back and let you guys know my final thoughts and if I would recommend this foundation. So this is a really, really cool and interesting foundation. The foundation actually actually dispenses through this little cushion over here. So it's a little bit different than your average like liquid or cream foundation, especially from the drugstore. Cause I do know that a few other high-end brands have this type of cushion foundation, but I've never really seen one from the drugstore or at least that I know of. So I bought this foundation at Farmer Pre, which is a drugstore in Canada. And I bought it for about $25, which I think is really expensive for a drugstore foundation. I see online though, that it is $16.99 on Ulta. So that's like a US price. This foundation comes in 12 shades and they range from warm, neutral, and cool undertones. The shade that I got is W3. I have no idea if this is my correct shade. I really just sort of winged it. I feel like this is definitely more geared towards those who have normal to dry skin. I don't know how much people would love this if you have oily skin since it is like the Lumi so it's a little bit more luminous and not mattifying. As for my specific skin type, I have normal to dry skin. Right now it's leaning a little bit more to like the dehydrated dry side, but it's not too, too terrible right now. Uh, I have no oil in my skin whatsoever, so that's definitely something to keep in mind. All right, so let's begin. Enough talking, let's just get started. So I'm not going to apply any primer on my skin because I do not want to alter the results of foundation, but I will moisturize. So I'm going to use two different tools in my face to apply this foundation. I'm going to use a beauty blender on one side and then I will use a brush on the other just to give you guys an idea what tool will work better with this foundation. Okay, so now I'm just going to take my sponge and just like pop it in the foundation and you get quite a bit. As for the color, the color looks good. It may be a little bit warm, but I think we'll be able to make it work. Ooh, ooh. Okay, so far I'm a little bit in love. The foundation just blended out so easily and my skin literally looks like perfect in that one like application. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my brush. This is the Zoeva 102 Silk Finish Brush. It's just like a buffer foundation brush. I'm just going to tap my brush into the foundation so I just have a little bit on and I'll start applying that to the other side of my face. I feel like the foundation almost worked a little bit better with the Beauty Blender. I don't know, I find the Beauty Blender side Looks a lot nicer. Just my opinion though, I don't think there is much of a difference. Okay, so this is what the first layer of the foundation looks like. It looks really, really good. My first impressions is that it looks really natural. You still see like my freckles over here. It doesn't cover up all of my skin. You definitely still see my skin through it. So let's see if we can build it up to a medium to full coverage. So I'm just taking one more tap and I'm gonna build on top of this. Yeah, this definitely is buildable. It's definitely covering my freckles up a little bit more with the second layer. Okay, I'm getting these impressed. Okay, so this is what two full layers looks like. I definitely got a solid medium coverage with this. I feel like if you're more into full coverage, this is not the foundation for you, but I don't think it gives you like a strong, completely blanked out type of full coverage. On my chin as well as around my nose, it did not cling to any of those dry patches, just glided over my problem areas and just made them look fantastic. It feels like a tinted moisturizer. And when I touch it, it's only been on my face for a few minutes. It feels a little bit tacky. So I feel like this is definitely the type of foundation that you would need to set. So I'm now gonna finish off the rest of my makeup. I'm gonna apply bronzer, blush, eyeshadow, all that jazz, but I'm not going to powder my face. I'm not going to like touch the foundation, but obviously I wanna see how it works with like all the rest of my all makeup. Right guys, so I am back. I just finished applying all of my makeup. So look at the foundation, nothing has really changed. It has finally set down though, like it does not feel tacky anymore. I can honestly say this will probably be one of my go-to foundations if it stays like this for the rest of the day. Hey guys, so this is my first check-in. It's now two o'clock. We started this experiment at 10. So far, the foundation is looking amazing, just as good as it did when I first applied it. Really no updates to show you guys but I figured I'll give you a nice little close up. It's really looking really, 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 really good. A little blotchiness over here, but I think that's my bronzer, not the foundation. So yeah, 
So far so good. I'm gonna update you guys again in a few more hours and I'll give you my final thoughts. Hey guys, so right now I believe it's about 4.45. This is when it starts to get a little bit dark out. So I really wanted to film my last check-in before it got completely dark out so that you guys could actually see the results on my face. Honestly, I could have stopped this first impression when I first applied. Literally nothing has changed on my face other than me taking off my lashes because I couldn't stand them anymore. What I wanna compare this to is the Kojendo foundation. I find it's very similar in the way that it makes my skin look. That foundation as well as this one just makes my skin look like skin, but better. Settled a little bit in like my smile lines, but I feel like honestly all foundations do that. It did fade a little bit where I have like a little bit of a breakout going on over here. I feel like you're not gonna be able to see it on camera because the lights are really bright, but I feel like that could be prevented if you do set it with a powder because like I said, I did not set this foundation with a powder. If you have dry to normal skin, I think you would really like this. However, if you have oily skin, I don't think you would love this foundation so much because my skin is looking really, really, really glowy and dewy. I mean, not over the top, but there's definitely a very significant glow to my skin. And I feel like if you're oily, it's just not gonna work. I just want you guys to get a nice close up of what my skin looks like. It just looks really, really good. Overall, would I recommend this foundation? I think it's pretty obvious that yes, I would 100% recommend this foundation for anybody with normal to dry skin, um, even really dry skin. I think you're really gonna love this. This is probably one of the first drugstore foundations that I've just been head over heels in love with. There's been drugstore foundations that I've liked but not loved this much. So that is it for my first impression of the L'Oreal True Match Lumi Cushion Foundation. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to let me know what you thought in the comments and definitely let me know what other first impressions you like to see from me because as always, I would love to know. I love you guys so much and I'll see you next time. Bye. Hey guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to be doing my last video of 2015.